Okay, so uh, thanks everybody for coming. Um, so today we have Nat Sipo from Tokyo University and he's going to tell us about, I, I believe, something to um, start using a um, combination of sort of modeling you do with a little bit of data driven machine learning type ideas. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. And uh, thank you for coming. And uh, also, let me thank from Tony and CK and Google and the computer in organizing this really wonderful the program. And today, I'm going to talk about the, a bit about um, kind of combination of modeling and uh, um, the data driven stuff. And uh, I want to discuss um, two issues. Um, the one is about um, can we um, estimate the model? I mean, suppose we have some kind of pattern or structure, and, and can we estimate the model from that? And um, and the, this was done with the in the collaboration with uh, the Kokuda and also uh, the discrete version. And um, the particle version of this was uh, done with uh, the to do. And the second part is um, a bit more. I know, I think the challenge, and and I should say the second part is largely um, preliminary. So I really want to discuss with you, you know, what's the better way to do this. And the second part is about can we estimate the hydrodynamic equation corresponding to the particle dynamic, microscopic particle dynamic? So starting from kind of like let's say random equation, can we get some kind of partial differential equation? So this is. And um, I'm going to talk about, and um, I, I will start from this part, and which is actually not really that the matter stuff, but still, this part is um, probably the nice um, the, um, the introduction for, for um, also for this part. So, therefore, I also try to explain a uh, little bit about this part. Okay, let me start. Um, okay, uh, so the first of all, um, so let me um, to clarify the, in, in what sense we are using. The machine learning or data driven type of stuff. I mean, because, because in, sometimes you know, those some kind of you know, like, some understanding and such kind of stuff. Um, so recently, if, if we say machine learning, then it's for many people it means a deep, deep neural network. And however, what we are um, so far we haven't used, I mean, we didn't use uh, the machine I mean, deep neural network. So what we are using is outside this part. I mean, it's more like a, I would say, conventional the machine learning stuff. And the probably most of the broadest uh, um, the category is, um, is, is called AI, which is very vague. And uh, I, I don't think there's a clear definition of that. And uh, within that, there's a, a category of machine learning. And the, but actually, I would say the machine learning is a very, very broad area. So which covers almost every um, data driven type of stuff. And inside, and the deep neural network, and particularly the deep core neural network, is very, very tiny part of, of um, in, in this uh, category. So there are many other um, things. Um, and, uh, and another thing that I want to say uh, is that um, the machine learning, I, I think that all the machine learning is basically the functional approximation. Maybe you may have some other view, but I, in my point of view, the old machine learning um, the method is kind of functional approximation. The simplest one is there is, I mean, the supervised learning. In this case, very simple. Um, suppose we, we've got the data for X and Y, so we want to estimate function F. So this is very basic. This is the really like the functional approximation. And even um, outside the supervised learning, but for example, the generative model, which is very popular now, is um, still, I would say, the functional approximation in the sense that um, this is, we approximate the mapping from the kind of known distribution, like a normal distribution, to the unknown, uh, I mean, the, the probability distribution that we want to do the reproduce. And, uh, and the recurrent neural network, which is a bit um, to measure, um, the one of the two major uh, the neural network uh, structure, which is a uh, kind of um, designer for the, the analysis of for the time series data. Um, in this case, what we are like, um, approximating is not really X and Y, but the X, the Y is dependent on all the history in principle. But again, we are just approximating this very complex function um, by using the method. 
and also the reinforcement learning again this is also now very popular um but this this is also the function of approximation in the sense that the for, for different state and options for, for the from the experience, we get the data for the state and action, and then finally we optimize or approximate the functional form of the action as a function of the state. So all of them are, I would say, just the functional approximation. So whatever the method you use, and this is I want to say on. Um, um, and so, and in terms of so the today's talk is about uh, we want to estimate the model. And the typically our model is something like a um, time derivative is equal to some, some function. And uh, in order to do that, uh, typically uh, we it is convenient to consider the what is called the state state model. And uh, in this model, uh, we define the cost function for which we make all the energy um, by the two terms. The the first one is a measurement. Uh, maybe let me start from the second part. Second part is called the model error, so which is nothing but the left hand side minus right hand side. And, uh, um, and the right and this function is typically parameterized by some kind of parameters. And this is kind of deviation of the, um, the model uh, that you, you have at your hand. And, and the first term is called the observation error or measurement error. In, in many cases, we cannot measure the older data or from the state side or, or the state. And therefore, typically we use kind of, you know, I mean, some measurement operator and, and eventually what we can observe is just this one. And then we compare it with the, this measured um, state and the target, and then this is the kind of uh, the measurement. And uh, the suppose uh, we may achieve um, the perfect measurement we can measure everything the so all the state and also um so suppose this is kind of projective and we can measure every state and we can measure the time so that means that we can measure the time derivative if i a time derivative very accurately um which i call it the dense observation in this case um the the inference is not i would say not that difficult and uh, this was also, there have been many methods that have been proposed actually in this direction. However, recently the group in the, the Mason class of um, um, the proposed a method called the Singi. Um, and uh, now many people are kind of reusing this. And I think that this is very simple and therefore it's nice to um, explain this method. The idea is very simple. Uh, suppose we want to estimate ODE something like this, F dot is equal to some function. And for PD case, um, U of A, XD, time derivative U is some kind of function. And what we do is first parameterize um, F. Basically, I mean, the simplest um, case is that we can just derive find the polynomial rate function. Um, on the ground and the square two and the uh, all the coefficients are kind of common. PD case are a bit more complex, um, but it's the idea is the same. The, we expand in terms of u, u square, u cube, and so on. And also we need to include some kind of special derivative, second order special derivative, uh dx u dx square, and so on. We include all the term and parameterized by theta. And and then Basically, what we should do is um, be comparing the, this like the red one side and white one side, and then estimate the those things. The the idea is that in in, in the matrix form, and so suppose we have the data of the for the PD case, let's say, uh, the at the space point X and T, and uh, we know the data of U. That we suppose we have. We've got the bunch of data, and uh, and uh, again, so now we assume that we can evaluate the time derivative very accurately, so we can measure, we can evaluate this left hand side, and also we can we have uh, those um candidate terms, or we we may call it the dictionary terms, and we can compute all the, those terms, and then let's see, I mean, parameter is here, so this is basically the linear regression, 
So we can just take a pseudo inversion. Um, the idea of uh, this uh, So we um we we use some kind of constraint so that such that you know, the many features are going to be zero. And um then what is the uh, uh, H in this case? Uh, no, in, in this case there's no H. I mean we can H, uh, H is actually the one identity, so we can measure everything. So and yeah, we can measure everything. So, and this is the one example for the uh, reaction given to um, I guess one of the smart system. Then way including just that is just a including just a norm of some norm, but I think it shows many different norms. Yeah, exactly. I mean, it's made yeah. So um, how does it depend on on the choice of, of norm things like that? Um, this is a. I think. I mean. This is a bit difficult question. I mean, typically people choose the, um, the, this kind of move. So if this is a square, and then this is kind of standard rich regression or I mean the, um, the rich regression. And uh, the simplest way to add the, um, the regularization term such that this is uh, the absolute value. And uh, this is called the, the one regularization or something like that. Mm -hmm. And this is one way. But um, how to say, if we want to apply the sparsity in a very precise way, what we need to do is actually, we need to check the, all the combi combinatorial, I mean, we need to check the, all the combination of values. Right? And whether, I mean, so this one is zero or this one is zero and those two are zero and all the combinations. And this is called L0 regularization. Which is the regular um, the for the regular uh, we um, use a penalty which is proportional to the number of finite terms. However, uh, this is impossible because the computer that the computation method I guess. That's the reason why people invent this computation. Uh, I mean there are many nice properties that we can easily compute. So that's uh, so this is a typical, I mean that we are. Yeah. However, there are many choices of uh, And uh, so this is the example of the, the reaction diffusion equation that uh, I mean, the kind of the PD, and that we produce, I mean, maybe I don't need to, maybe this this movie, yeah, maybe this is movie. Okay, so it doesn't work, but this is just fire, the standard fire. Okay. And, uh, and then you be using the, the data of U and B at, uh, actually we don't need to use every spatial point, but some spatial point, then we can come up with this kind of estimation. And the other terms are estimated as the, because of the spot. So, and, okay. Okay, so, so everything you get everything except the second unity terms are they, Thank you. Yes, yeah, yeah. You, you get some. Yeah, this is what really gets. But in this case, it's not so difficult because you can imagine that in the, for the, this type of reaction diffusion equation, each point is actually oscillating. So, therefore, if I just pick the one point, single point, I mean, I could reproduce this bottom. And then I just compute you know, the neighbor. And I just compute, I, I, I just. If I know the, the data of the neighboring points, then I can it's, it's not really, I mean, it, it looks a bit complex, but no, no sign. Yeah, there are the noise, and actually the original, the, the method is very weak against the noise. However, people invent, try to extend the method. For example, um, the method, which is called the weak CMD, which is basically, um, instead of doing the, using the strong form of the PD, something like this, but instead of, uh, using the weak form, meaning that um, an integral form of this minus this multiplied some test function and integrate over it. And in that space, um, we can do the same thing. And that is, you know, stronger than against the noise, right? Because basically you average over the space. Really. That, that's one way. And they apply some several 
equations and then to claim that this is very And uh, for example, if you plot only the far measurement, then of course, I mean, the, the measurement noise pretty, pretty, uh, is, is very important. Very important in the sense that we need to estimate what is happening in between the two measurements. And then the, the number of the dimensional parameters can be easily, I mean, they're going to be fine, very large, and uh, that kind of message that we Getting really, really difficult. And also, the the question I raised in, at, the, at the beginning was a bit different from you know, from this situation. Because what we wanted to do is, I suppose we have this kind of pattern, and can we um, estimate the model? So our data is just here, so just this one. And this is, I, I think, I mean, this is very typical. Um, Situation in this, I mean, let's take the soft materials and so on. I mean, suppose I mean, experimentalists get measurement and they get some kind of interesting pattern. And if they ask me, would you reproduce this kind of pattern using some theoretical model? This is very typical, um, the, the demand, right? I would say. And um, the, in terms of uh, the stage space model, this is quite impossible because our information is just there. And that meaning that we need a very strong regularization to do this kind of task. And what we did is um, use some kind of the Bayesian framework. And uh, let me remind you that the, the Bayesian Bayes theorem tells you that the Porteia distribution is equal to a likelihood times by a distribution divided by um, something, some normalization factor. And uh, what we are interested in is um, the posterior distribution, which is um, the probability of the parameter, the given the model, some noise level, and also the given data. And uh, in order to compute this, um, we need some kind of uh, model of your, um, we, we need some kind of model, which is the, the likelihood, which set likelihood. And also, we have to um, assume uh, what the distribution of, of your parameter. For example, parameter is uniform within some range, or the parameter should be thought in distribution or something like that, that kind of thing. And again, this is kind of more. And if I integrate this uh, this part over the parameter, then we've got this one, this part. And actually, this normalization factor has been so by computing, we can um, they select the model because is, uh, the model is here. And uh, by computing this part and this part, we can um, estimate the parameter and select the model. And what we did uh, is that. Um, I, I don't spend too much time to of this part, but um, what I want to say is that basically we solved PD many, many times in the past. Decade. And uh, the first we prepared a family of models. We prepared some several models. And in this particular case, we prepared the model which is called phase to the crystal. Um, you are not familiar with it. This is kind of um, some type of sweet flow and value equation, I would say. And uh, I just generalized three throwing value equation so that three throwing value equation has one main scale. I could generalize it uh, so that the, it ha the model has a two main scale. So, first, we prepare the family of model, and uh, each model has many parameters. And we, in the parameter space, um, we come to starting from some initial thing. So for some parameter, we get some PD states. Um, we compare the pattern to the target pattern, and this is uh, nothing but the likelihood. And then, from this, based on this likelihood, we, we sample the um, the posterior distribution based on the Monte Carlo method. We're using Monte Carlo methods, and um, yeah. So, so basically, I mean, we, we compute the many many times and compare with the power left and the um, the 
the estimates the beta on us. But in, well, I, I should say one important thing, um, but because in, in this type of you know, pattern forming system or some self assembly or some structure formation program, um, if we start from the, some random uh, distribution and uh, fix the parameter, and then we have a bunch of the different pattern in the sense that uh, in, up to the rotation and the translation. And therefore, we want to, I mean, so in terms of image, so those are different. I can, by, by, I, if I compare um, those two patterns by pixel wise, then they are different. However, I mean, we may call it, call them the same pattern. So therefore we, we need to identify them. So that's the reason why we define some kind of um, order parameter so that this is, this has a twofold symmetry. And for example, uh, in the case of the pattern that I have shown here, Actually, this is where the crystal and then it has a square for symmetry, and therefore I define the, the order parameter so that in the Fourier space I compute um, how, how how what kind of symmetry this the Fourier space has, has and uh, then I define the, the order parameter and I define the distance between the the pattern that we get and the target pattern in term in this space. So that's that's what. And then I mean, we, we get um, this is just um, what I, I just want to say that of course it is kind of successful and for, for, for some cases. And um, so this is the protocol of the crystal in 2D. And this is the double gyro structure, which was kind of you know, very popular maybe 20 years ago. I mean, in the software community, maybe nowadays, probably not so much. But also, I could estimate that this kind of structure, which is called the front of uh, A15 structure, this is actually the approximate of the three dimensional crystal. And I actually, I didn't know this structure at all before doing this study, but still, I can, starting from this structure, I can um, estimate the model that can reproduce for this type of structure. Um, okay. So, yeah, so this is the first part. And is it, is there, Question. Okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I guess I um, got, got a question. So, how sensitive is this approach to um, the path, the sparsity of the collecting the data? What's the kind of resolution? Uh -huh, uh -huh. Oh, which resolution? The, the resolution of your oh, okay. Yeah, you've got some image, mm -hmm. and you're sampling the image with some resolution. Uh -huh. and, so, did you so I mean, for for the the, the Cindy, uh, the original Cindy yeah. is very sensitive, I should say, because you know it's been computed in the in the pixel wide way. Um, the our approach is not so sensitive because you know basically I integral uh, over. So this means that I compute the I go to the Fourier space, and I'll multiply some cosine. I mean the cosine theta or uh, cosine L theta in order to uh, extract the um, L for the symmetry. And uh, so, so I, I mean, you know, I, because I integrate over the whole space and therefore, you know, even if I add the noise or if I have uh, some kind of uh, missing point, still I can compute I mean, this kind of quantity and then uh, it works. Oh, of course, it's the, um, Let's say, yeah, I, I forgot the number, but I, I can. Yeah, but in, in that case, you can take both of them. I mean, the first, the two first. So but that means that you have a kind of hidden variable. So therefore, the original the Cindy doesn't work for that kind of situation. But yeah, so in that case, you need to, for, for example, um, your equation is if your equation is x dot is, is equal to u r v and the v dot is equal to something, and then your data is just x, then you need to estimate v dot right so from x. 
so okay yeah and uh, okay so let me move on to the to the, the second part um so as i mentioned the, the goal is to estimate so here is um the data of um, many particles are, are moving around and um we get kind of you know the full strain the density data and can we estimate um the equation the governing equation for that one and uh, i should say the reason is the several the few few groups are starting this kind of thing and uh, the one is the um the the young Dunkel and uh um is a much proper much and the recent EP published a paper and also there's another group um to be working on this kind of thing um I think that the biggest problem is that there's no ground truth. I mean, there's no answer to this question. It, because hydrodynamic equation is something, I mean, we, we use a hydrodynamic equation because it is convenient, right? It's, it, it, hydrodynamic equation doesn't really mean that this is correct um, the equation that we produce the microscopic uh, information. Actually, we, I mean, the, the, the hydrodynamic description do not have many information in, in the microscopic details. So therefore, um, it, it's not really clear. I mean, for, for example, for the, for the model, um, the estimation part, um, we can define the problem like a, we start from the known equation, let's say some kind of, uh, let's say an obvious Stokes equation. And we solve an obvious Stokes equation and we correct the data and possibly we add the noise and from that data we whether we can recover the original obvious Stokes equation or not we can pose this kind of question so in this case we know the obvious Stokes equation which is the answer to the problem um, however in this case I mean this problem is intrinsically um, the, the nuance so therefore we always need to ask in what sense I mean the our estimated equation is correct. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yes, yes. And uh, so this is, I think, the, the biggest difficulty in this type of the problem. Um, and also, the another difficulty is that which I, I do not really discuss in this talk, but uh, the another difficulty is that the typically for the, this kind of um, the model estimation problem, which is the, there are the two issues. One is how to choose uh, your dynamical variable, I mean, your coordinate or basis. And this is first issue. And the second issue is how to um, approximate your governing equation. So, and there, and, and in, the, in the first part, I discussed about this, the second part. And uh, this first issue is also very, very important. So, however, in this talk, I a bit focusing on the um, the macroscopic variable is relatively clear, and I, I don't touch this kind of issue. But this issue is very, very um, difficult, particularly when we consider this in you know, polymer system, such kind of stuff. We don't know really what kind of macroscopic variable we should use. And um, my, um, of course, I mean in those. Studies, I mean, they frame that uh, for some cases, this method is successful and, and so on. But um, I personally, my personal goal is to rather um, by, by considering this kind of program, I mean, I want to get some kind of intuition um, insight into the, what kind of, you know, higher, I mean, by, by tuning the kind of uh, the machine learning method, um, we want to understand what kind of um, hierarchical structure inside this kind of um, the, the program. I mean, so, so rather than I'm out say, um, of course, it is better to have a kind of successful example, but I, I'm rather interested in, you know, when, when it, it fails, and when it, it gives uh, the reasonable result and so on. And by comparing those, the, the failure 
um, that we may get some kind of insight into the, the what kind of uh, the unknown the physical the issues inside this kind of problem that I wanted to um, start actually. So I, I picked two examples, and hopefully everybody knows and I will not explain. But the well, first one is a check model, and the second one is loops. And uh, I choose those two because we know the microscopic model and we know the macroscopic model relatively. And for the VCHEC model, um, this is global alignment appears, and there's a corner two model, and there's some several efforts using the nonlinear focal frame or Boltzmann or whatever, um, deriving the corner two type equation from the VCHEC model. And uh, for MIPS, so using the active Brownian particle, we can get the MIPS. And again, um, there's some, I think for, in this case, there's still, I believe this is still control buffer. Um, in the sense that um, the, the main, the mechanism is a kind of uh, the negative diffusion and which we may describe by Kahn-Hilliard equation. But however, there's a question whether you know, Kahn-Hilliard, the Kahn-Hilliard equation is equilibrium um, the model, and whether Kahn-Hilliard equation is really correct to describe um, maybe some more. And, uh, and uh, I think, I mean, the, the, the Michael Page and the uh, U and uh, the model B or B plus will include additional the non gradient uh, and uh, such as this and that. And uh, I don't think we can estimate this term because I mean, this term modifies the phase diagram a little bit and uh, the shape of phase diagram. And therefore, from the data, I don't think this kind of even, um, this kind of this term cannot be estimated. But this term changes the qualitative behavior of the system, like a uh, the um the suppression of macrophage depression or kind of appearing the bubbles and so on. So, I mean, I think I mean depending on the so yeah so may, maybe depending on the level of post training or um depending on the scale maybe um two models could be different. Okay, and um, what we are doing now is very, very simple. So we solve this particle dynamics and we've got the data of the, the particle dynamics. And uh, we um, make it in the continuous field by applying um, the panel. And uh, also apply some kind of filter, which I will talk. And then we want to get some of the data of the the continuum field, and then the, basically we use a kind of um, the, the single type um, the regression. So basically compute the time derivative and the dictionary term, and then compare and then make the estimation. So this is the, the basic idea. And of course, I mean that this just I mean the magic thing doesn't work, and therefore we are kind of struggling with how to improve that. Um, so the first step is to apply the, the kernel, and uh, which is typically the Gaussian kernel. But so far we choose this sigma to be a very uh, small. So I mean, the, almost I mean, the particle length there. So therefore, this is not really the post range. I mean, we just I mean, make the data into the continuum. <coughs> and then they, we apply some kind of filter. The filtering means that we just pick uh, some the range of uh, wave numbers. And uh, we, you know, I mean, apply uh, Fourier transform and the filter and come back to the regions. And then, you know, if this is just, this is the original data. And then we just ask the high wave number to part and then we got this. And apply, I have, we apply this for the every dictionary terms. So that means that every dictionary terms have the information only inside this uh, wave numbers. So this is what we are um, 
screen now. And uh, another thing I mean a bit um, um, the different from the original one is that we, we have a parameter, right? I mean, particularly in, in our program, I mean, there's a very clear parameter. For the mix case, we have the factory number. And for the widget case, I mean, the noise, uh, the strangers of noise, which by, by which we can introduce the phase transition. So therefore, uh, we correct the data for the different factory. So, so meaning that, um, so this block is, um, uh, yeah, yeah. And so instead of considering this, I mean, the two equation, we, as, I mean, we assume that kind of, you know, this parameter is also kind of dynamical variable so that we can include the system into the, into the dictionary. Term. So, so meaning that, um, so this is the, the original block and uh, we multiply this to um, the dictionary, which is just the original one times vector. And then we prepare the data with different vector number. And uh, so this part, for example, this part is vector is zero, and this part is vector is 10, 20, and so on. And then we prepare the one big, very big, um, the, the matrix here, and, and then compute this one. So then you can get automatically um, the cohesion of uh, the, the new form of this term. So we can distinguish between the, the you know, how to say, um, the term which is controlled by the parameter and the, the term which is not controlled by the parameter. So this is um, what we are. Sorry, one more question. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, is linear and factory number? Uh, yes. Yeah. So, so, even though there is no yeah. binary number, no. yeah. in principle, we should have, again, you know, we may, the naive thing is just a polynomial expansion in terms of factory number. Mm -hmm. Obviously, it would not be good. And yeah. So, yeah. And uh, in terms of the sparsity, um, as Tan said, um, you don't need to do that. And uh, um, we now we don't use um. So there are many ways to um to implement the sparsity. So now what we are doing is um. So first we define the dictionary terms. For example, for the equation for density, I mean to just this kind. Of Dictionary term, maybe I, this is just, I mean, the up to cubic order or same kind of special derivative. So, first we get for and also for the priority, priority density, and then we eliminate term one by one and have a look at the error. And uh, then the sudden error jump goes up. And uh, and then we, we um, take this number of terms. So, meaning that we assume this is optimal point. So, um, so this is a bit out of um, the method, but still um, kind of um, it, 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 it works, I think. Yeah. The, um, the more, um, how to say, the accurate method is that um, we compute, we um, the maker, the regression using some kind of uh, the L1 regularization. And then the whole question is that, you know, how to validate, um, how, how to compare, you know, I mean, the, the five terms and six terms and so on for the different number of terms. So this is the whole question that, and uh, in the information scientific view, um, what we should do, I mean, the, the Bayesian approach is most uh, accurate or most reliable. Method. And, uh, the rest, the reliable method is that which is for the close validation. So meaning that we um, decompose the original data into the several, uh, the, the training part and the test part and the make estimation for the, the training part. And then um, using the estimated, uh, the parameters we apply to the test data and the computer error. And uh, if the, the error in the test is small, then it is 
um, that we assume that this is the better model. And also we can penalize the, the I mean, we should prefer the less number of terms and so on. And, the, and by doing that, uh, that we can get some kind of optimal number of terms. So this is a way to um, the implement the sparsity. But what we are doing now is very kind of very just simple and a bit of it. Um, yeah, okay. So, and then the, we the first do it for the, the active Brownian particles. And what we get, the first, I mean, for the density, um, something like this. Um, and uh, if we apply this if the method to the polarity density, actually it doesn't work. It doesn't work in the sense that I mean, this is the, the error in the polarity density. And you still see that the error is essentially one. Okay. So therefore, the meaning that our time derivative is really, I mean, not correlated with any dictionary term at all. So that means that uh, that, that implies that why the density is actually not the high time variable in this problem. So therefore, what we do, uh, so what we do is instead estimate p as a function of rho. And then so we get a, a bit smaller error, and uh, by which I mean we get something like this, and uh, by combining this and this, and for example, and then we get, get the negative uh, the diffusion term. Which is a bit more meaningful. But of course, I mean, we didn't, I mean, put any prior knowledge on that, that kind of thing, right? And so, I mean, machine can find it. So it's not really surprising for us, but still, I mean, not extreme, extremely bad. And for the Richard case. So, so maybe I'm confused where I'm going to say there is a different kind of part. There, there. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. I mean, I didn't, I, I forgot to put the yeah, record. Yes, there is no <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's not one. And actually, I mean, I just checked the sign that you know, so far you didn't really, I mean, the, pay attention to the, the, the real numbers and uh, yeah. So actually, numbers uh, so far is not really good. I would say in, it's not really good in the sense that, um, for example, for estimated uh, model, we can uh, draw the spin order line, which is completely. Different, completely. I mean, it doesn't reproduce anything about. So, in 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 that sense, I mean, this estimated equation is not really not really good. And I'm not sure why. Why is that? And for the VJ case, um, we change the noise noise length, and uh, as we know, I mean, the uh, the the phase transition from the disordered phase. To the global fold order, and in between, some kind of bounds first, probably in bounds first. And then, if we do the estimation um, for the density, um, the quite um, certainly, I mean, it's very much the reason of the equation. And uh, so, in this case, I mean, the both the density and the variety are kind of either than the variable in the sense of in, in terms of error. And the density is a significant uh, um, and also this is very important terms for the for the corner in the corner too. So however there are several missing terms, um like uh, the linear in P or P cube term, and also kind of um, the diffusion or viscous terms on the and And so far we couldn't get those terms. Okay, so yeah, so basically uh, those are the summary of um, what we are now. Um, for me, um, the, the good news is that we, we see that um, 
the product is not really the other than variable, and also we get some kind of negative confusion term. But as I said, the, the, the form of the hydrodynamic equation is not really the good enough. Um, and also, the, the, fourth, the higher division term. So, therefore, if I solve the estimated hydrodynamic equation, we get it for the larger case. So, therefore, you know, I mean, that hydrodynamic equation is not really um, self consistent. Um, and also, so far, we didn't get to find a true non equilibrium term, like, you know, non, -non gradient. And for MIT, uh, for VCHEC, um, we got the reasonable equation. I mean, particularly for the density equation, it's quite uh, um, okay. Um, for the density, uh, for the priority density part, I mean, we've got the, these other vection terms, uh, which are also the good news. We, however, we can we don't get as said we don't get the term like a P and a P cube term, and I could imagine that um, this is because um, in our data, the most of the state in, in the most of the data are really the P is essentially one. So, I mean, if, if we compute the absolute value of P uh, average over the space. Then it is really the, it, only at the initial stage. I mean, that this quantity is small, right? I mean, it's, it's the, starting from the random initial random orientation and the quite fast time scale. I mean, initially, the, the absolute value of a P it grows up and then stay constant. And then after that, some interesting, I mean, the band or in some fluctuation, macroscopic fluctuation first. In that sense, our data do not have the information of uh, such a, a fast time scale behavior. And also, I think the same argument applies with the diffusion term, because essentially, um, in a very short time scale, we've got the very macroscopic structure in which, um, I mean, the higher order diffusion term is, or, or diffusion in the Richard model is uh, essentially zero. So, therefore, I think, I mean, the, those information are missing in our data, and that's the reason why we cannot just at those times. So maybe we can um, the focus on the, some, the, some specific part of the time series, and then we might be able to get some time terms, and that's what we found. And yeah, this is what I wrote here, the R is good data. Just, just, I mean, the, um, the chop the data so that we just pick up with some some part of the data, which basically we use con we use some kind of physical prior in the estimation, and also we are trying to change um, some kind of by by changing the way the scale and the time scale how the result is changing how they are changing and so on, and uh, so, so the method um that we are using so far is very kind of um, um how to say. It's too simple, I, sh I should say. And um, in, in in the future, I mean, we should if we should use a bit more statistical inference approach, a Bayesian approach, um, to quantify um, the, the uncertainty of your estimation, and to so quantify, you know, how much the, the estimation is whether estimation is really reasonable or not. And uh, by using in, in the current method, you cannot quantify that. So this is a big problem. However, still, I don't think um, just using Bayesian approach um, improves everything. I don't think so. If I couldn't estimate in the current form, probably Bayesian approach also doesn't work. So maybe we need some kind of physical prior, physical knowledge into the system to get uh, the nicer estimation. Yeah, so that's it. Thank you. <laughs> but, uh, I think it's quite fun. You build your own type of and your dictionary. If your dictionary does not have the all terms for using some terms. Yeah, yeah. Um, of course, that, that's possible, but you know, I mean, 
for these two programs, I mean, we, the macroscopic behavior are quite well studied. And I mean, uh, all the terms are Yeah. I, I don't think, I mean, we need a much higher order terms. I mean, in terms of nonlinearity, there's a bit of question. Yes, I agree. But uh, in terms of the spatial gradient, I don't think I mean, we need a more um, a higher order term. But, yeah, but of course, I mean, this is not. Um, so you want me to say, well, you can have like the library full force. Yeah, but that's, I mean, the computation really, <laughs> I mean, crazy, right? <laughs> so. <laughs> Yes, okay. so I want to check the since we talked about the study of the dictionary, I, I, I guess we can make sure that we have to all the things that we know that we expect from the high number that are out there, plus more set of uh, that, That's your starting dictionary. Yeah. So if you come at least to the order, we assume that we model now without one radical equation. Yeah. 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 And, and also, I mean, we prepare. So in, in the original CD setup, I mean, they really don't care the physics. And therefore, for example, in the P equation, I mean, the row can appear, which is strange, right? But, you know, and here we choose the difference so that, I mean, the real aspect can be similar to one and such kind of thing. So I, I think you've, you've highlighted a very crucial point here is with this instability right, of the learned dynamics, which is something that, right, if, if you learn from the time uh, derivative, uh, stepwise for on very short intervals, nothing guarantees that the, the, the dynamics that we learn is long term state. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that sort of actually, I mean, we've run into this problem in other settings, well, even with OD, right? Like stuff explodes, uh, very generic. Um, and, and I mean, you, you're suggesting one uh, or one sort of workaround, which is looking for the early stage data where you have sort of more deviations from this. Slow manifold, as you put it. Um, but are, are, like, do you have any, any other sort of. Okay, so one thing I forgot. Us, like, I mean, I think this is a fundamental problem, yeah. right? And then in, in, in solving that problem, I think is, is, is very important. To yeah. So I, I, forgot, progress. I, mean, I forgot to say on the one thing. I mean, so when, when we compute from the time derivative, actually, this is not instantaneous time derivative, actually. And we pick, I mean, the, we change the, um, the time scale to the sample of the data. And, uh, and actually, this is not, um, not very short time scale. So therefore, we, we need to. Oh, so the, 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 the instability is basically not in the, not in the data that you will train on. Because as we say, for the majority of the data is, in, uh, is on the slow manifold. Yes. And what would need to look at either specific times, right, burning times, or maybe at specific spatial regions, like maybe uh, confusion you could resolve by looking specifically at interfaces, right, yeah. by focusing the attention on regions where you actually are not in a bulk or in bulk state, but where something interesting in the dynamic is happening, which maps with the interface, yeah. or in the case of plot would probably also be something like yeah. between gas and, and, and liquid, we actually, or plot, we are actually something, uh, something interesting it's happening then. Right? So I'm wondering whether something that's sort of based on these attention uh, ideas uh, could, could help there, right? You're basically you're trying to first learn a model, but then you refine it um, by uh, by having a look at regions where something interesting is happening and we're interesting, for instance, is something that's unexpected for, for from the point of view of the train dynamics, right? or maybe we're just the errors. So they can focus in on regions automatically uh, that, uh, that uh, are informative to, to improve the model. That might be possible. Yeah, but the most, yeah, I'm not sure. But it might be possible. But it, but it depends, I, I should say, I mean, it depends on, I mean, the, what kind of dynamics we are looking for, I think. Because, I mean, the, for example, I mean, this, if I take, I mean, the phase separation, so there is a slow dynamic like, um, of the interface, yeah. the motion. And it, it might be, I mean, so this kind of, even if I 
you use the data on the slow manifold, we may be able to get this kind of information. We, we, we may be able to reproduce this kind of data. I mean, what's missing from the learned equations is the dynamics, the fast dynamics that brings you into the slow manifold. Right? Yes. So if you try to use these equations to evolve in the slow manifold, you're going to yeah, run yeah, out of yeah, So yeah. that's, that's a good problem. Yeah. But I'm not sure that the, the, uh, using RE stage data is kind of thing. Well, you don't know always have access. Yeah. If you if you do an experiment, you can the experiment. There is no way of yeah. um, right. I mean, for, in order for pattern formation, often you have to mix your reagents together and you put it in the microscope in these whatever one minutes. But most of the early stage has already happened, right? And then you're sitting there and you're already seeing the reaction. It's got some like trend, early trends, yeah, it's kind of better, but yeah. yeah, but then we can disturb the system. Well, and uh, we can also improve the kind of the, the kind of you know external field in the in, in, in the um this kind of inference method. So that's the one way to do that. So to keep disturbing the system so that the data can go back and forth between the slow molecule and the molecule. Yeah, this is a yeah, very difficult question. I mean, we, I mean, for sure, we do not have a what state is, you know, I mean, the criteria for that kind of thing. And also, I mean, this might must be associated with the choice of um, the hydrodynamic variable, which is, you know, I mean, we just use the density and the polarity density because those are very reasonable candidate of hydrodynamic variables. But, yeah. So, I mean, suppose, I mean, uh, we consider just kind of expansion in terms of moment, I mean, the density, the part density, the method, and so on. And we can first, you know, include many of them. And uh, then to make this kind of influence. And then I, I, I think, I mean, that this is, very strong sign of you know the your I mean variable is not like the dynamic quantity because I mean this means that uh, your left hand side is really the orthogonal to the you know I mean the, the right hand side mm -hmm. meaning that your left hand side is really the out of your the slow the slow dynamics so this is but yeah I mean there's a nice way to quantify or um I don't know. I mean, it's, it's, but if in the case of MIPS, I mean, is there, I mean, forget about, I mean, this kind of uh, the, the estimation stuff. I mean, just purely the whole of the problem. Is it possible that, you know, um, that we can say, I mean, in this situation, we can, we should kill this. Um, uh, maybe there's a power, yeah, power in the, the rotational diffusion time. Yeah, yeah. So you start getting I mean, in some sense, maybe what I mean, probably what I said is that it seems that maybe these things depend on the quality. You know, you get the quality about how many this side, you've got a yes, no answer. This is not good, this is good. But when it was on the quality bit, it looks to me that it's quite hard. Um, 
I think, I mean, in that case, I mean, we, we should use the really the Bayesian approach, I mean, because then it tells you what is the probability that um, the P is the height of damnification or not, something like that. So in, in this type of approach, you know, this is really the yes and no, but uh, if, you, if you use the Bayesian approach, then it's more continuous, right? I mean, this more probabilistic. I mean, I mean, I mean, but the other thing that I see from this is that, in some sense, your parameters are already listed. In sense, so it means that you know, writing down high value equations. In some sense, what you think about your parameters, they have some average value and their fluctuation. But each, each of your, exactly. each of your constants in your equation has an average bit and has a fluctuating bit, and you need to worry about what that fluctuation bit is and quantify it somehow. And somehow that might give us a bacterial sign. That is, I think, very important point, and uh, I've never seen the argument of that because you know, I mean, because we, we didn't, I mean, even if I extend this approach to the um the Bayesian type approach, I mean, we do not have any, I'll say, the criteria whether the stability of your model. Right? I mean, what you're saying is kind of the structural stability of your hydrodynamic model, and the standard hydrodynamic model is very robust against the parameter change, but. If I estimate it in this way, and maybe by using Bayesian approach, then if we change the parameter, then it might be possible that you know that this estimated hydrodynamic equation doesn't work immediately. So there must be some kind of physical prior which guarantee that your hydrodynamic equation is structurally stable. And I I, I don't know how to do that, but I mean this is a yeah, very interesting direction. Yeah, I don't know how to do that. Maybe each time compute some spectral property and then that needs lots of data. Yeah, lots of data. You need a huge amount of data. Yeah, huge amount of data and also kind of post process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you. But from the data, it's not really clear, right? I mean, there's a slow manifold there, but by changing parameter, the slow manifold changes. And we don't know whether you know, I mean, structurally. <laughs> so it's, it's really, I think it's really the physical intuition that we can, <laughs> we can constrain the estimation. Any more questions? Well, that is it. Thank you. Thank you.